Uh, and my point is this, that God the Father wants us to have a stake in his kingdom. He wants us to feel that we have a part to play, that we have a role to, not, not, not feel, to know that we have a part to play, to know that we have a role. And to feel that this is our kingdom. This is, this, we're all going to spend eternity together in this kingdom. And it's all ours. And he wants us to inherit that kingdom. Guess what? If you as a son know that, then you want to bring more into that kingdom. You, you, want, you, you, want, to, you want to do your father's bidding so that the, the kingdom can be full. Hallelujah. That is what it's all about. God wants us to have a stake in his kingdom. We never had a stake in our father's business, in my dad's business. We never got involved. I, I didn't have any emotional attachment to the business. So when the time came, he just sold it. And that's the, what's, and that's, that, I, I said that to say this. I really believe that many times when we're trying to get our children involved in, in our family, that we need, to, we need to make them have a stake in it. If not, they will just go out and do their own thing. It's like, that's daddy's thing. That's mommy's thing. I'm going to do my own thing here. And I see that even, I even see that happen in ministries where people don't feel they have a stake in the ministry of their parents. Those of us who are in ministry, we know, you know what I'm talking about. And that's why many children of ministers and pastors leave the church and go and do their own thing because they don't feel they have a stake because they, they've never felt that it, they were, this, is, this is our thing. This is something that we're doing together for the, king, for the glory of God. So I want to challenge you if you're doing something and you want your children to be involved, let them have a stake in it. Hallelujah. <laughs> let them have a what? A stake. Amen. Because if they have a stake, then they put their heart and soul into it. And God wants us to put our heart and soul into his kingdom, and that's why he's given us a stake in it. He could save all the people he wants to save without us. But he says, no, I'm not going to save people without you. You are going to help me with this. You're going to be co-laborers. You're going to help me in this mission. We're going to do this together. You're a co-laborer. That means we're both laboring. You, you are co- and <laughs> Okay. How do you... We're, we're co-laborers, amen? <laughs> One translation says, fellow laborers, praise the name of Jesus. That's what 1 uh, Corinthians 3.9 says. It says we are laborers together with God. We're co-laborers, praise God. Amen? So I want to challenge you to labor, to have a stake in your father's business. The way that happens is when you take on the responsibility of taking the things that God is showing to you and revealing it to others, and sharing it with others, and not being ashamed, hallelujah, to share what you believe with others. Statistically, eight out of every ten people we meet or work with are lost spiritually. That is, they're not saved. Meaning, they will spend eternity away from God if we don't do anything about it. Well, that should bother us. If we believe that we have the antidote if we believe that we have this, uh, this positive, uh, life-changing answer to the questions of our world, then we should want to share it. I said we should want to share it. Amen? It's, it's like, <laughs> I said you already seen a lady that's going to fall into a ditch, and you're there, you could do something about it, but you don't. People will say you're wicked, and that's true. So why are we not bothered? Why are we not praying harder? Why are we not going the extra mile? Why are we not leaving the 99 and going after the one? Like Jesus taught us to. Why? Well, I want you to imagine a company like, like Samsung. Let me use Samsung as an example. This applies to whether it's Samsung or Amazon. Or, but let's take a company like Samsung. Imagine a company like Samsung finds out that 80% of its potential customers are ignorant of its products. In other words, they don't know that the product is there. What would they do? Do you think they would sit down in their offices and sing Kumbaya and the Lord? Kumbaya. Do you think they would do that? What would they do? Yeah? They would advertise. They would do sponsored events. They would do promotions. They will have coupons to try to get people to get discounts. They will have prizes. They will, have, they will do everything in their power. 80%. Why? Because they, they, want, they like money. 
They're, they're, they're interested in their bottom line. They, they, you know, we, come on, we need, we need to make some more money here. And there are 80% of people out there that don't know about our products. They will do whatever it takes. They will move heaven and earth to try to make sure that we know about their products. Whether we buy it or not is, is a different thing. But at least we know. You can't, you can't walk around London and say, oh, I've never seen any adverts for Samsung. You, you can't. They will put it, if, if they have to put it in your pocket, they will put it in your pockets. Somehow, they will send it electronically into your pocket. You will open. <laughs> they want you to know their product. Well, what does the church do? 80% of the people outside here don't know our product. They don't know what we bring. They may have heard some, some stories about Christians who are these weird people but they really don't know like you do. And what should we do about that? Should we just sit down in church and sing Kumbaya? <laughs> no, we have to go the extra mile. Amen? And that's what I'm trusting God, that God will put it on our hearts to go the extra mile, to do more, to reach lost people. Because God, God has a heart for them, and God wants to see them saved. Amen? Amen? And we have so many scriptures to prove that, but I haven't got time to go through all of that today. Hallelujah. Yes? Are you, are, in, are you in agreement with me? Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have to come, we have to come to, we have to become all things to all men. All right? We have to become all things to all men. But we can only do that if we develop compassion for them first. And that's what the disciples of Jesus, that's what made them so effective because they became all things to all men. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. And I said, like I said already, I know it's not easy, but it's not an option either. It's not optional, I should say. It's not optional. It's mandatory. Amen? You know, like I said sometimes, driving is not easy to learn, but you learned it. Is that not so? Yeah, you, those of us who are driving, we, you know, some of us failed three or four times. Some of us did more than f five or six. I, I'm not going to look at anybody somewhere there. <laughs> That, that did their <laughs> test five or six times, seven, some, somebody seven times. But you made up your mind, you're going to learn this thing because you want to be able to drive. When it comes to sharing our faith, we think, oh, I'm, I don't know, I'm not comfortable. Oh, no, you have to get comfortable. I said you have to get comfortable. I said we all have to get comfortable because it's not optional. It's mandatory. We're all called to be co-laborers with God. Hallelujah. We're all called to persuade people of their need for God with whatever we can. Now, will they always listen? No. Will, will, will they? That, but that's not our problem. Our problem is we've done our part. We've sown the seed, and we wait and allow God to do his part. Hallelujah. Amen. And we need to find a way to let people know that there is a better way. Amen? Amen. So I want us to ask God to touch our hearts again today um, and so that we can share, we can learn, we can, be, we can find ways of sharing our faith and share it in such a way that it produces results. And I want, us, I want us to start that action this year by doing what we did last year. And that is, I want you to think in the next, during the week, to think about two or three people that maybe you've been, God has been bringing them to your mind. They're not Christians yet. They don't know God yet. Or maybe they, they, they're just doing their own thing. But you feel a heavy heart for them. You feel compassion for them. And what I want you to do is, I want us to start by praying for them. Amen? I said I want us to what? Start by praying for them. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, if you, if you, if you want us to join, because I want the church to do it as, as, a, as a whole, I want you to send those three, two or three names in to the, to the office or to my wife um, in the next week or so. And what we want to do is we want to put them on, a, on the screen and every Sunday, when we come after the worship, we're going to spend three to four minutes just praying for those people by name. We just mention all their names and just pray for them. And I want you to be praying for them as well as a start. And then I want you to make up your mind that before the year runs out, you will do something to reach out to them. It might be invite them to your home for something. It might be share your faith. It might be buy them a book that will help them. I don't know what it will be. God will put something on your heart so that you reach out to people. Because at the end of the day, we all have to get comfortable with sharing what God has done for us with those around us that do not know him. And so my prayer and my desire is that we will develop the compassion of Jesus for those who do not know him yet. And we will trust him that he will bring some of them to his kingdom. I like what Paul said in, in, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 
He said, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant of all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. Amen? To those who are under law, as under law, that I may win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law towards God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Amen. 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 I just wanted to say something. I know this is not prepared. Um, yeah. I was sharing with the teachers yesterday that God is interested in the eternal destiny of every single child. And I know my husband has been speaking and I know he has a heart for what he's been saying. And I, I don't want you to just think that it doesn't involve children. Because most people that come into faith, come into faith as children. And when we see children, our cousins, our, our, our nieces, our nephews, our own children, or any child you come about in the playground, children of people that are your friends, remember them too, that God is interested in saving them. Mm -hmm. Don't despise the children. The Bible says, let the little children come to me because to them the kingdom of heaven belongs. Mm. And if we do everything in this church and we don't reach out to children, we, we, we have failed. Because God wants every last one of our children, first of all the children that come to this church, and the children that we know, the children that come to us and hug us and love us that don't even come to this church, that you have a relationship with. God is interested in saving little children. And little children can make a decision for the Lord. They can. And so as we're learning, you know, to, to speak to our colleagues at work, and that is great, let us not forget the little children. As we're putting together the list for the people we're going to be praying about, I know some of you have children that you are saying, Lord, save this child. Let them be included in that list. So I want to see a list that is varied. Let the little children come to me, Jesus said, and let's not forbid them. Because unto them too, the kingdom of heaven belongs. belongs. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. And I just want to remind you that the only thing that will follow us to heaven are the people whose lives we've changed. That God used us to change. We know it's God that does the changing. But he used us as a channel to reach them. Those are the only people that are going to follow us to heaven. <laughs> the car is not going to follow us. The house is not going to follow us. All the thing we spend so much time and energy doing is not going to follow us. But those who we have exposed to the things of God and who came to know Christ because we were there for them. Amen. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name.